Meet Chrissy and Chris. Bam. He's a professional wrestler. He's so full of himself. Now you want to talk about it? Up. Ego. Bam. And when he had a blind date, I surprised her by taking her to a wrestling match. He lost. Oh. Meanwhile, Chrissy dated a chef. Cream puff. And he was sweet on feet. She does have some pretty suckable toes. Now that both these winners are hoping to pin her. He's too busy rolling around on the mat with other guys. He's too busy beating his ass. He's, will they have a change of heart? What? I'm Chris Jagger. Welcome to Change of Heart. And let's meet our couple. They met working in the same Mexican restaurant about nine months ago when she refused to cover his shift and started a little war. But that soon led to pure amour. And he's been putting his cheese in her taco ever since. Yeah, please give it up for Chrissy Matthews and Chris Nash. Chris, let me start with you. What makes... Chrissy, the salsa on your chip. Man, I care a lot about this girl. She has stuck with me through some tough times. We've uh, gone through a lot of things. In fact, now, when I got fired unjustly from that job that yes. we met at, she quit and went with me. That All right. I could not forget. I will never get it. Now, Chrissy, what keeps you munching on his fajita? Oh. Chris is a... Sticking with that Mexican theme. Chris is a really funny guy. He knows how to keep me laughing. He can be romantic whenever he wants to. He's also a pro wrestler, which I think is really exciting. A pro wrestler? Indeedy. Wow. Yes, yes. Oh, uh, now, how's the wrestling, let's say, between the sheets between the two of you? Ah, uh, she is a bore in the bedroom. Oh. You will not believe. No, she, she has no imagination, no creativity whatsoever. I, I tried to talk dirty to her, and she laughs. He sounds like someone laughs. out of a porno. It's oh, funny. you wish I was out of a porno. You will be like, hey, funny. baby, what, what can I do for you? See you know? what I mean? She's like, I don't know. I'll tell you what I want. I'll tell you what I want. Yeah, when you want it. Yeah, but he's waiting to hear it. That's the problem. Yeah. When I'm in the mood. Very seldom. Very now, Chris, well, let me ask you this. Even though she doesn't always play along, how is she when it comes to keeping up with you? She lasts about two minutes with me, You're guys. You're so lying. That's not a lie. You will he not believe me. He takes way too long. He takes way too long. No, way too long? Wait, takes too long. Has anybody else ever heard of that? I mean, come on. Now... I get, she, I get she'll bored. Com she'll complain. <laughs> she gets bored. Oh, that's nice. Uh, she'll complain about no foreplay, but then so we'll try something kinky and I'll tie her up or something. <laughs> I touch her. Bam! She's done. She's really? Gone. She's gone. That's it. I'm, no He's more lying. for me. I might as well be pleasuring myself, which I have to do from time Whatever. to time. Sitting right next to her. Sitting next to her. Now, Chrissy, uh, we got The Rock. You got Stone Cold Steve Austin. Well, what's this guy's wrestling name? What should it be? Pompous ass Chris Nash. <laughs> oh, he's got a nice so, ring to it. He's so full of himself. He likes to rub it in my face when girls hit on him. He comes home with like lipstick on his face. Oh, I can't. Uh, but I, I come home. I, I come care. home. Now you want to talk about it. it Ego. Bam. Right here. <laughs> Little Miss Princess over here. It has to have me. I'm a princess. I have to acknowledge that parts of her are perfect, that more beautiful than any other girl. Why, why not? Um, you know? Like her feet. She My insists that pretty. she has beautiful feet, and I gotta acknowledge it before I get anywhere with that. <laughs> well, that's a good place to start. <laughs> a good place to end up, No. Well, let me ask you this there, old pompous ass Chris Nag. <laughs> what about a nickname or some kind of name for Chrissy? <laughs> Psycho. Oh. No, I'm not Psycho. Psycho. Well, my buddies came up with that one, and it's completely because she will argue about not wanting to argue. I don't like to argue. Yeah, but you argue about it. Because you come up to me and say, you like to argue. No, I don't. So yes, you argue you do. about no, arguing. I don't mind. I like a little spice in the conversation, right? But then if, if the he argument doesn't go well for her. To, to argue with. He covers his ears when I'm talking. and goes, la, 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 la. No, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. But what about her? Does she flip out, though, when you guys argue? Yeah, she no. flips out. And you know what? She'll grab anything like a piece of food, and she I've will never hurl thrown it. Food. You have I've thrown never food. thrown food at you. You've thrown anything you can. Now, food. Chrissy, what about Chris's role in the relationship? How would you categorize that? He is the bitch in this relationship. He is always nagging. <laughs> <laughs> he is really? always bitching. You don't spend enough time with me. You don't think about me. I uh, forgot to get him Tabasco sauce at Chick Fil A, and I heard about it for like a week. Okay, wow. now that's not a big deal. But yeah, I gotta be the the bitch whenever she's as inconsiderate as a guy is. Oh, now, please. a month and a half ago. My dog ran away, right? right. And it was, she was my baby. And he yeah. blamed it on me. Uh, she, you weren't there. For three days, I did nothing but cry and, and, man, and look for my dog, <laughs> and right? And I tried to console him. I'd like hug him and he'd just How much time there. did you spend looking for my dog? I wasn't going to. You're being... Bam! Hey, there it is. None. Now, Chris, how do you think this show is actually going to help you? 
we completely rely on each other. We're, we're emotional crutches for each other. We've been through a lot, and so I know that if we're, if we're gonna make the decision, we know we need each other now, man, we're gonna have to go through some therapy, and this is gonna be the day to decide it. All right, well, that's what we'll do for the two of you. Now, hang on, because up next, find out what Chris's date did that made him so excited his toes curled. That's next, stay tuned. Chris and Chrissy. Now, Chris says that Chrissy's got the temper of Hannibal Lecter and the bedroom pizzazz of a dead fish. So, we set him up with a babe who's as sweet as Carol Brady and as passionate as a wild tiger in the bedroom. So, let's make some commotion for Corinne Sullivan. Hi, Corinne. Good to see you. You know Chris? All right, have a seat. Now, Chrissy, we compared her to Mrs. Brady. Who, who does she remind you of? Maybe Heidi Fleiss? <laughs> you don't know. You just don't know. Now, Corinne, uh, first time you talked to Chris on the telephone, what did you think? He has got one of the most sexiest voices on the phone. He sounds like a radio DJ or something. <laughs> Certainly Great. a character. Oh, yeah. Now, what about in person? Were you impressed then, too, Corinne? Well, at first I thought I should take my heels off because he's really short. <laughs> but he is extremely boyishly cute. And he told me that he works at a theme restaurant and he dresses up as Calvin from Calvin and Hobbes. He looks just like him. Like a little cartoon character. Yeah. yeah. All right, now, Chris, what about you? When you saw Corinne ready for the date, what'd you think? Oh, man, I, I was completely intimidated when she opened the door. I, I, my heart just started pounding. I, I was tripping over my tongue. I knew right then I would have to play it real cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you trying to take it easy? Yeah. All right, so where did you start things then on the date? Well, I surprised her by taking her to a wrestling match. Well, <laughs> figured he'd fun. do something about himself. Well, you know, and I try to take her at times, but she doesn't like to go. She's not turned on by it. I'm usually working whenever yeah. you have your wrestling matches. You know So I she won't go to the wrestling matches. Corinne, you went. How did you like it? I was very impressed. He put his whole heart and his soul into his wrestling, and he was doing these backflips on this guy that was three times his size. <laughs> I mean, he was really, really good. So you were impressed with his abilities there. Now, did he win one for you, Corinne? No, he lost. Oh! Chris! It was huge, man. Oh, man. I got but, ripped off. All right, how about afterwards? I hope you got cleaned up after the match and everything. We, we definitely, I had to go take a shower and wash the other guy's sweat off of me. We but hope. What she doesn't know is that uh, I had to take an extremely cold shower. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I hear what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Now, Chris, I understand that after your shower, you found that, that Corinne has something that Chrissy doesn't. What was that? She has dreams and ambitions. When I came I out of the dreams shower, and ambitions. I couldn't believe it. She was walking around my house looking at the, the pictures in my house, something I've never even done. And I've she, never looked at the pictures she, in your house. Yeah, but she pointed out all these intricate details and things that she was comparing art that she had done in the past uh, to, to the paintings there. I know that Chrissy is talented, but for some reason, she, she doesn't pursue it whatsoever. She has no ambition in it whatsoever. She doesn't let it's it come out. Doesn't not at all. It. Not at all. So, understand. Corinne, let's talk about dinner. Did Chris go all out? Did you guys have a good time? Um, not really. He took me to the... <laughs> well, he took you where? He took me to the restaurant that he that works he at. That he works at? He's oh, all about himself. He is so all about himself. Uh, wait, he took you to the... Yeah, now go watch him wrestling. So then you're at the restaurant where he works. Did you feel intimidated because he knows everybody? Well, or? I felt like I was on display. A lot of people... Being shown off? Of course. Yeah. I had to show her off. <laughs> Uh -huh. pass it up. Yeah, but what I want to know is on the date, did he have to dress up like Kelvin? Oh. <laughs> no, no, but he's got this little doll that he keeps in his truck. Uh, I see. No. So, Chris, I'm thinking maybe you're trying to scam an employee discount and make it a cheap That's date. That's probably what he's doing. All right. All right, what would your friends think at the restaurant? They told me I was way too ugly for her. Oh, really? <laughs> nice friends you have. They were blunt, yeah. They were nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice supportive. Now, Chris, here you are spending some time with her. Uh, you got to know her a little bit over dinner. Anything that might be hard to swallow? I tell you, she's way too social for me. You know, she, uh, I'm a homebody. I like to stay at home and do my own thing, and she very much likes to be surrounded by crowds, and I know I, I couldn't give her that kind of lifestyle. 
So that would be a little bit different. All right, so talk about the things that were uh, working for you, other than the physical that was obvious. What else was working for you? <laughs> well, she, <laughs> she made me feel very special. She gave me a lot I of confidence. I don't ever make you feel special. She gave me confidence, whereas Chrissy seems to want to, to, to knock me down. She wants to, to beat me down some. If I do something wrong, she, she tells me I'm not a man. Some I'm yeah. trying to make you a better man. That's all I'm trying to do. She has a weird way of trying to prop you up, I guess. Uh, yeah. Now, Corinne, what about you when you were hanging out with Chris? Uh, did you get an insight about their relationship? He didn't say much about her at all. I tried to get him to talk about her, but he didn't want to say much. But from what he just said, anybody like that, he doesn't really need her. <laughs> now, Chris, I understand that things took a little unusual turn after dinner. Uh, where'd you go? We went directly to my bedroom. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, she sprawled out nicely on the bed, and I stayed a respectful distance away, sharing the same bed. Oh. We, we sat and we watched Muppet Christmas Carol. Oh. Uh, a little Very holiday tame. theme. Very tame, right? Now, Chrissy, you're looking a little shocked, like, wow, I can't believe she was in his bedroom. Were you surprised? <laughs> oh, no, because whenever I got off on my cruise, there was a woman in his bedroom, too. Oh! <laughs> Now, uh, Chris, I understand, um, you know, or at least I should assume maybe that she took her shoes off. And we know Chrissy says that she's got the great looking feet. Did you get to compare the feet? Let's, everybody here now, let's find out. These are the feet of a woman. Right. Oh I, don't know if it's just, I don't know if it's just because they're attached to these legs, but these are incredibly sexy feet, and they make <laughs> Princess Chrissy's feet look like 12 year old you kids. You are so funny. Look at that. 12 year old kid. Come I've on, been Chrissy, be so honest. Who's got better, better feet here? I've I been have better feet. At that. Okay. I have I've been feet, dreaming though. about that. It's the battle of the feet. <laughs> All right, Chris, uh, how'd you wrap up the evening? Well, uh,. I had to take her home. I had to take her to a, a bar. Uh, <laughs> dropped her off at a bar. We were in the she chart. She old enough to drink? I felt oh, like oh, such a weenie. She, she was having a friend, was closing it down. She was meeting with her. I felt like such a weenie because I, I didn't go for it. I, I was trying to stay the gentleman role. So she had to take over. And uh, she said, uh, come here, babe. Grabbed me by the back of the head and gave me a kiss that <laughs> curled my toes. Man, and kept now, giving it to me. Now, Corinne said his toes were curling. Could you tell that he was loving this lip lock? I, yeah, let's just say I could feel that he liked it. <laughs> <laughs> I think we get the picture. Yowza! Uh, well, uh, coming up next, we're going to find out how Chrissy ended up in bed with her date, so stay tuned for that. date with Corinne. Now we're going to meet the gent that we cooked up for Chrissy. Now, Chrissy says Chris is more high maintenance and egotistical than Donald Trump. So we set her up with a chef who's as laid back and as modest as Forrest Gump. Give it up for Brad Pendleton. <laughs> Hi, Brad. Good to see you. You know, Chrissy? Cake. Yeah. Did you make this? Uh, Brad, I understand yeah. you're a chef, but what's up with the cake? Well, Chris, it's a double rum chocolate cake, and it kind of reminds me of Chrissy because each <laughs> layer you get to tastes better than the first. Oh, oh I see. I see. Yeah. As you work your way through it. Now, Chris, if you had to pick a dessert, what dessert does Brad remind you of? Cream puff. <laughs> Now, Chrissy, what about you? Uh, Brad comes to the door, you open it, there he is. Were you happy? Oh, yes, he is such a hottie. He's got these great dark eyes, a smile to die for. He looks like Ricky Martin. Oh, yeah, that's a great thing. And he doesn't have an ego to go along with it. Got so that was nicely different. Now, what about his sense of style, the way he dressed compared to Chris's? Oh, he knows how to dress. Obviously, Chris will wear like a flannel shirt with the sleeves torn out, like hiking boots untied and the stupid fisherman hat. I'm not hey, clone. Now, wait a minute. To, just to prove Chrissy's point, I understand we actually have a photo of that that we can take a look at. Here's, here's Chris uh, posing for everybody. There you go. Uh, it's after a couple of drinks now. Come on. Now, Brad, like Gilligan. Well, Brad, what about you? Were you uh, digging the way Chrissy was looking? Oh, yeah. She looked good. She had beautiful eyes, nice, strong, muscular legs, good figure. Now, Brad, what about when it came to time to figure out where you're going to take her? Any trouble there? Oh, no. This guy made it easy for me because he never takes her anywhere. <laughs> oh, okay. Not when I want to. So, Chrissy, now, this guy's a chef, so I'm thinking he's got to pick out a really nice restaurant mm -hmm. for you, did he? It was a great restaurant. A perfect little Italian place. We got to sit outside. Chef, he didn't cook for you? Oh. What's up, man? That's why you got no ego. You ain't got nothing to back it up. We got our pictures oh. taken together. Yeah. All right, and we also have a picture. Uh, you guys had your picture taken yeah. at the restaurant, so we can take a look at how oh. cute you look. Look at that. 
Chris's hey, now, idea on, of Chris. a date is like Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, they look good together, don't you think? Uh, yeah, no. I think I cook no, on my no, next date. No, that's fine. Now, that's Chrissy, fine. Uh, how was the conversation? A little table talk going on? It was so refreshing to be able to talk to somebody and not have a debate going on the whole time. He just like listened to me and it's small, was empty, such a fluff nice talk. I'm sure oh. that's what. Oh no, 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 no. Now, the- Brad, what about in the conversation? Anything that kept coming up? Her feet. <laughs> yes. Well, we've heard a little bit about She did them. mention her feet. She kept showing me how beautiful they were. And I'm not much of a fur person, but she does have some pretty suckable toes. <laughs> All right, Chrissy, I understand you guys went dancing afterwards. Mm-hmm. Uh, and does uh, he know how to shake his bonbon? He does know how to dance. Okay. There was fast music playing, but he pulled me all close, like we were dancing all slow. <gasps> Chris doesn't know how to jealous at all. How to dance. <laughs> he doesn't know how to what? He doesn't know how to dance at all. Uh, I don't dance. dance. That's yeah. fine. I've seen you try. I do plenty of other things well. <laughs> well, oh. wait a minute, Chris, why don't you take her out dancing? You dance with guys in tights in the ring. Come oh. on. <laughs> Get out there on the dance floor. Yeah, come on, man. That's all professional. Now. Oh, I see. All right, Chrissy, so you're out there on the dance floor, a little hanky panky going on, anything, Chrissy? Oh, uh, I couldn't resist just nibbling on his neck. And- <laughs> Kiss me back, and he never did. Oh. Well, Brad, why were you resisting? You know that she had a wrestler boyfriend. Were you a little afraid of the guy? No, no, no. He told me. She told me he wasn't any good. So <laughs> oh, I see. she wouldn't know. She never goes. It was more of a respect thing, you know. And I, I, I did enjoy the kisses, and I was kind of hoping she'd grab my butt because I got a pretty nice butt. Now, Brad, it, it seems like that uh, you're seeing some of the passion that Chris says he's missing in that relationship. Why do you think that is with them? Uh, I think it's because he's too busy rolling around on the mat with other guys. That- <laughs> <laughs> he's too busy beating his ass. He's forgotten. How to- <laughs> he's forgotten how to turn a woman on. All right, Chrissy, how did you guys actually uh, end up on the after well. your boogie night? Oh, uh, we went on a nice little carriage and horse ride. It was kind of cold outside, so we had to cuddle up together, keep warm. Very nice, nice very and romantic. Romantic. Very romantic. And Chrissy, did he take you home after that? He took me to his home. Oh, oh. to his place. Oh. Uh, I met his roommate and his roommate's girlfriend, who kind of knew Chris, and her reaction was, you're dating him? <laughs> He's kind of weird. It's my family's reaction to her, too, so. Oh. Oh. So, Chrissy, I'm thinking it's kind of late. It's got to be close to bedtime. Can I ask where you slept? On his futon. And Brad, where were you while she was on your futon? On my futon. Oh, yeah? So wow, that's great. Uh, nice futon, huh? That's a futon action there. Chrissy, what was, it, what was it like to wake up with Brad next to you? Brad and I were on the same level in the morning. Neither one of us are morning persons. Chris, and the, on the other hand, He's like chipper and singing show tunes. <laughs> so horrible. Show tunes. That's yes. a little fair getting in them tights. Yes. <laughs> oh. I I Chrissy, we heard it, we heard all the good things, but was there anything at all that you really missed about Chris? It was great going out with somebody else and seeing the city, but it also made me realize that being with Chris is really comfortable. He makes me feel secure and good about myself. I take so care you, of her. Yeah, you had a couple of moments, and that's very nice. All right, well, we're going to see what your decisions are, because up next, who will Chrissy choose? Is it going to be the chef or the wrestler? Find out when we come back. <laughs> And Chrissy, now they came here today because they're feeling more like each other's crutches than each other's lovers. Now they wanted to see what would happen when they didn't have each other to lean on, so here we go. Chris, we're going to start with you, get your decision first. Nine months of trying to make this relationship work, that's a long time. We went out with Corinne. You actually said you were intimidated by her looks when you first met her, but you guys did have a lot of fun. You spent some time on your bed with her. Uh, what do you say? <laughs> I'll tell you what. Corinne really uh, gave me a self-confidence that I feel like I've been lacking for a while, in, as far as being in a relationship. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, would, uh, I would like to see if I could maybe transfer that back into our relationship. Oh. So you say stay together. Oh. All right, Corinne, sorry things didn't work out. Chrissy, we're going to get your decision now. Chris says he wants to stay together, but you went out with Brad, and you said going out with him was really refreshing. Uh, you had some real conversation. You spent the night on the futon together. You woke up. You said that was comfortable. What do you say? Uh, Brad showed me a great time. He showed me what a real date is like. Um, Chris and I argue way too much. It's too much stress on our relationship. So I'm having a change. Of- and Brad, that me. Brad says he's in. You know, basically, it's not time for therapy in the relationship, Chris. It's time to move on. 
No. And I'm sure Papa's ass, Chris Nash, there's somebody out there better suited for you. You'll be just fine. Wait, right on. All right, dude. That's our show for today. Thanks to Chris and Corinne. And good luck to Brad and Christy. We'll see you next time on Change of Hearts. Yeah.